In this presentation, I'm going to show you one of the possible approaches to perform sentiment analysis in Python. I say this is just uh, one possibility of performing sentiment analysis because there are really a lot of possibilities of variations, methods, lexicons, and so on to perform the sentiment analysis. In this approach, in this practice session, my purpose is to try to identify the aspects that people are talking in a sentence. And then I would like to know the corresponding sentiment for each of those aspects. So I try not to only get the general sentiment of the sentence, but I try to look deeper into specific aspects that people are talking about and the corresponding sentiments. In this example of the practice session, I'm going to use an example of a sentence that is again talking about food. This time it's about a side dish called guacamole. It is made from avocado, lime, pepper, salt, and then some people also um, adding some tomatoes and red peppers, green peppers, and so on. And this side dish is quite different with how we usually have avocados in Indonesia because we usually have those avocados in, in a form of sweet smoothies with condensed milk and so on. So this guacamole um, is a Mexican dish and sometimes for short people just call it guac, G-U-A-C. Okay, so let's start the practice. To be able to follow this practice session, you need to install a Python package called Spacey. The environment that I'm using for this presentation is PyCharm and my Python version is 3.7. And then I would like to remind you again that to install the Spacey package, you need a 64-bit version of Python. So this is the code. Up to this step, uh, the code that I show up to line 13, the purpose is I would like to tag the part of speech of each word, and then I would like to parse the sentence into a dependency tree. So in the first line, I import the spacey package. And then on the fourth line, I call an English model from spacey. And then this spacey also have, um, it has another size of model. I use a small one. They have medium and large model, which you might want to use if you, let's say, you need a better accuracy on the part of speech tagging and sentence parsing. And then on line six, it's the sentence example in which I zoom here in the blue box to make, to make it look clearer. So this is a sentence from a restaurant review that I take from Yelp. It says, food is always great especially table side guac. But today's service was really slow because of kitchen. Okay, so that is a sentence and then you see there's a typo here. So guac should, should be spelled as G-U-A-C. Here there's a, a typo, it's spelled G-A-U-C. So um, the writer misspelled between A and U. And then on line nine, I simply call the spacey language model to tag and parse the sentence. And then on line 12 and line 13, I say that for each token in the document, so a sentence here is called a document, for each token in the document, I will print out all these things. Basically the index, the word itself, the tag of the word, and the children's. So let's see the results in the next slide. So I think you've seen before the output of the spacey tagging and parsing, but let's go through over it again. So here the first indices, they are the indices of the word. So the index zero is the word food, the index one is the word is, the index two is always, and the last index 15 is the word kitchen. So token.i shows the index of the word in the sentence. 
token dot text it shows the word in the sentence so in our original sentence if you just go through the words it will create the sentence that we have food is always great especially table side guac and so on token dot tag and then underscore it is the tag of um, each word food is a noun is is a verb always is an adverb great is an adjective and so on now here in this part i create a list in which the list um, contains the index of the children of this token and then that children's word and then that children's tag so here the word in the index zero foot it doesn't have any children the word with index one in the sentence the word is it has several children so the children are the word foot it index zero with the tag noun the word always with index two with the tag adverb the word uh, guac in index six with the tag noun and then the word but index seven uh, with the tag conjunction and the word was index uh, 10 again the tag is word but now this is a word in the past tense so one of the amazing thing that happens here i think is that spacey recognized that this guac is most likely a noun although it is spelled incorrectly and then guac is also an informal word for guacamole but still you see that this language model this language package spacey it is able to guess that this is although it might not know this word it doesn't know g-a-u-c what it is but it can guess that most likely the tag for this word is noun so remember in part of speech tagging we try to guess even though for the words that we have not seen before we try to guess what is the most possible tag for that word of course sometimes it may be wrong it may be right because it uses a probabilistic model but here you can see that the guess for this word guac that is wrongly spelled is correct so i find it quite amazing this is the visualization of the dependency tree of the words in that sentence now if you look at this tree and you wonder how can we interpret the relation that one word is the parent of the other um, let's take an example of this phrase really slow so here really slow you can see that slow is the parent of really this is the case because in the phrase really slow the emphasis the head word is the word slow which means the important part of that phrase is the word slow really is just the word to modify to emphasize how slow it is it just wants to say it is really slow so the head word the important thing in this phrase is slow that's why slow becomes the parent and then the child is really okay so that's how we're looking at this tree now going back to the sentence i told you earlier that here i would like to identify the aspects that people are talking about in the sentence so the writer of this review is talking about food um, guac service and kitchen and then i would like to identify the corresponding sentiment for each of those aspects so food is great and then guac is also great service slow kitchen also slow so to be able to do that i make an assumption that um, the aspects that people are talking about they are nouns and then the sentiments they are adjectives so that is an assumption that sometimes is not correct 
right? Because sometimes you use verbs to express sentiments as well. For example, the verb love, like, dislike, hate. There are verbs, but they also describe sentiments. So there is a limitation for this assumption. Yes. And then from there, I take a look at the tree and then I think, okay, I may be able to identify that by first looking at the adjectives that has been um, identified by Spacey in this dependency tree. And then first I will try to check the parents, the direct parents of those adjectives or the direct child if there's any. And then so direct parent, direct child. And then I also take a look at this relationship and feel like maybe we can also get some relations if we look at the siblings. So in this tree, the siblings are all the words that have the same direct parent. So here the direct parent is the word was and the siblings are today service slow because, right? So sibling means like your brothers or your sisters who have exactly the same direct parents like you. Okay, and then from this kind of um, method, direct parent, direct child, and direct sibling, you already see the limitation, which is that I cannot identify that food is also great and then kitchen is also slow. So yes, there is a limitation and it's um, because this is kind of a rule-based identification, it is actually hard to be able to identify correctly all the correct relations in a sentence. The reason is because sentence is very, um, so first reason is that sentence vary a lot so people can write a lot of variations of the sentence. So it's really hard to make the exact rules to say that if this noun appears, that adjective appears, this kind of relation must show that they are related. So that is difficult. Second difficulty comes from the dependency tree parser. So like when we're using spacey, the result is not always 100% accurate due to the model that the spacey was trained with, due to the typos in our sentence, due to the misspelling in our sentence and so on. So it makes the dependency tree inaccurate such that our identification of two words that are actually should be related, it becomes inaccurate as well. Now in this part of the code, I will start collecting the pairs of adjectives and uh, direct parent, direct child or the siblings. Here I start by um, collecting the child of an adjective, which the tag is JJ, but I will only take the child if it is tagged as a noun, which is symbolized as NN. So I will put all those pairs into a list called collected pairs. So I created a list called collected pairs on the line 17. And then from line 20 to 27, I simply start by um, checking each token in the sentence. If the token is JJ, and then I will start looking at the children of the token. And then I put an if constraint here. If the child, if the tag of the child is noun, and then I will take the child and then I put it in this pair. So I will um, put the noun first and then I will take um, the adjective and then put it in the second uh, element in the list here. So you can see from the tree that the adjectives, they don't have any direct children, which is a noun. So this part of the code for that sentence example will result in nothing. In the next part of the code, I'm going to obtain the direct parent 
of the adjectives. Again, I will only take the parent if it is tagged as a noun. So here on the line 32, I start by uh, put a, putting a constraint. If the tag is JJ or an adjective, I will check the head or the parent. Okay, so you can check the parents of a token by token.head. And then if you want to get the tag of that, you just add the tag underscore. So if these two constraints are satisfied, the one in the line 32 and the one in the line 34, we will obtain a pair of an adjective and then its parent, which is a noun. So in this case of this example, we will get great guac and then table site guac. Finally, in this part of the code, I'm going to find the siblings of an adjective. Again, I will only collect the sibling if it is a noun. Again, I start by using the loop to take a look at each token in the document or in the sentence. And then in line 42, I say that um, if the token is adjective, then we'll start looking at the siblings. So how can we find the siblings? So in the line 44, I said that the siblings are, first we take a look at this token's head, which means that we look who is the parents of this word. And then based on that parent, we are taking all the children's, right? So if you know somebody who is, let's say A, and then you want to know A's sibling, the first thing to do is you ask who is A's parent. Once you know the parent, you ask who are the children of that parent. Now you get A and A's siblings. That's how we get the siblings here. Once you've got the siblings, it's um, quite uh, simple. You just say that the siblings tag must be noun again because we only care about nouns. And then we say, this sibling is not the token. So we want to get the same token again because we want to have the siblings, not the token itself. Now, if both of these um, constraints are satisfied, we will get a pair of an adjective and then the siblings of that adjective, which is a noun. So in the case in our example, we have the adjective slow and then the siblings of this uh, word, which is a noun, is service is a noun, and then today is also a noun. So these are the outputs from running those three parts of the codes. When we find the direct children of a JJ, so we have great table site and slow, there are all adjectives, which is the tag is JJ, but none of them has a direct children, which is a noun. So nothing here, just the adjectives. We don't find any direct children of those adjectives. And then when we try to find direct parent for the word great, we find the parent guac, which is a noun. For the word table side, we also find um, the parent guac, which is a noun. For the word slow, we don't find um, its parent, which is a noun. For the siblings, for grade and table side, we don't find any siblings, which is a noun. So we don't find anything here. But for the word slow, we find two siblings, today, which is a noun, and service, it is also a noun. So finally, this is our collected pairs. The guac is great. The guac um, is in the table side. Today is slow. Service is slow. So up to the step in the previous slide, I have obtained the pairs of nouns and adjectives from the sentence. It means that I have obtained the pair of the aspect and the corresponding sentiment that um, appears in a sentence. 
Now, furthermore, I would like to convert those adjectives into sentiment intensity, which means that suppose I have the pair of service slow. I want to know how positive or negative the word slow is. So that's what I'm going to do now. To do that, I'm going to use a sentiment lexicon called SentiNet4. This lexicon comes from this research, and then it looks like something like this. So it has a list of words or phrases, and then it has the sentiment polarity, negative or positive for each of those word or phrase. And then it also contains the intensity. Um, I think the maximum intensity is plus one, which is very positive. And then the minimum intensity is minus one, which is very negative. And zero, you can interpret this as neutral. So in the line 61 here, I start by um, creating a dictionary. And then line 62, I start reading each line in the senti file that I have opened here. So to open and read a TXT file, it is quite simple. You just say open and then you just um, make a loop and just read it like line by line. So I split each of the line in the sentiment file. So I will split the word, the polarity and the intensity. After I split this line, I can say that the index zero it is the word and then if there's an underscore i will replace it with a white space here so exam underscore failed will be replaced to become exam white space failed and then finally um, the sentiment intensity itself is on the second index in this list so my sense dictio will contain the key is um, the word and then the value is the sentiment intensity. So now let's put everything into, into an output that is easily readable. So here I would say that for each pair that I've collected, the noun and adjective pair, I will check if the adjective is um, in the sentiment net four. I will also display the intensity of that adjective. Otherwise, I will just display an asterisk. So this is the final result of this sentence example. So I have guac great, and then great has the intensity of 0.857. So it's very positive. For the pair guac table site, the word table site is not found in the Centic net. So we cannot conclude anything about this pair. And then today, slow, slow is minus 86, so it's very negative. Service is also slow, so it's, um, we can conclude that guac is very positive, today is very negative, and service is very negative. You can say that this is not very accurate, yes, because um, today, slow is kind of hard to interpret, right? It is more interpretable if we say today's service is slow. It's only today's service. The other days probably is not this slow. But anyway, that's kind of some limitation in the sentiment analysis. You want to go into more detail and then you get this kind of confusion. You go into more larger scope when you um, analyze the entire sentence, but then you cannot get the finer details like suppose the entire sentence is positive you don't know whether the positive is for food for guac for service for kitchen or some positives and some negatives right but um again depends on your purpose you just try to find the most reasonable the most logical and then apply it to achieve your purpose So this is the end of the presentation. 
which means this is also the end of this course in this semester. I hope you've at least enjoyed the course from the beginning and after the midterm exam in which uh, I just talked to you through the videos. And I hope that at least you learned something from this course. Whether it's about the methodology, you may forget all the details of the formulas and computation, but I really hope that you still retain the basic ideas of the methods, the models, and so on. Like why we would like to convert word into vectors in word to vec for example. And then I also hope that you learn some skill in Python to apply the machine learning and text mining methods such that when one day you need to use Python again, whether for the same purposes or different purposes, you'll be able to um, you know, catch up quickly and just run this Python programming. I hope this will be useful for you. So I guess let me just wrap this course up. And then if you have any question, always feel free to contact me, whether through ID or through the email, feel free to have uh, ask me any questions. And then so see you in the final exam. Thank you.